Thank you so, so very much, George. And, and, and thank you to, uh, to the Center for Justice and Accountability. And, and thank you all for being here tonight to honor this, this great organization. Uh, it is an honor for me uh, to be with you, particularly to be honored by a group that is so dedicated and so effective in representing the interests of the victims and survivors of mass atrocities across this globe. That, of course, involves bringing the perpetrators to justice. The men who are responsible for the murder, the rape, and the torture of the innocent, who thought themselves so powerful that they would never be held to account. It means going beyond the direct perpetrators who may have been led to their acts by misguided loyalty and reaching the leaders who ordered up the violence and cruelty, the leaders who are the true authors of the crimes, whose real motivation in trying to force people into submission was the preservation of their own wealth and power. We've seen the success of those efforts in the work of CJA that Dixon was speaking of, the conviction three years ago, though still challenged, of, of President Rios Montt of, of Guatemala for the crime of genocide, the work of CJA in, in bringing to trial uh, Colonel Montano, who is in fact the vice minister of, of El Salvador uh, for the murder of those six Jesuit priests, a man that I'm confident will soon be on trial in Spain. Yeah. Yeah. CJA's work shows how empowering judicial action can be for the victims and survivors when the law's remedies are brought to those who have never before had anyone on their side. You heard uh, George's introduction about my, my own work as, as a prosecutor in the United States and in the, in the tribunals established by the United Nations in Rwanda and Sierra Leone. Those are systems uh, like that in our country where the prosecutor has exclusive authority to, uh, to bring charges and to build cases at trial. And some might view that as a situation where the prosecutors is representing the state, or of an international prosecutor representing the state to establish the tribunal. But I've always seen, and I, I know that when that work accomplishes its, its greatest good, it's when prosecutors see themselves as representing the victims and working to use their power to uphold the state's responsibilities to protect its citizens and use the power that they may have internationally from the global community that in 2005 decided that all the nations of the world had a responsibility to protect their citizens, to use it to protect the citizens of the world from genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, and other mass atrocities. I know that it's sometimes, and having worked in these offices, it's sometimes difficult to deal with those that have gone through such horrendous crimes and have suffered such great losses. It makes one frankly feel uneasy when the tools that one has available cannot really heal the gravest injuries. They can't repair the horrible human damage of mass atrocities given the numbers of the victims and the, and the depth of the injury to the survivors. I've discovered, and my colleagues have that when, and CJA certainly, represents the idea of working with those victims and survivors, because one sees that what they want so much, their greatest need, is a recognition to see that the wrong that they and their loved ones suffered recognized before the world and the wrongdoers brought before the law to face responsibility for the great harm that they have done. George mentioned my work in, in the media trial. I was parachuted into that case in the, in the seventh month of, of the trial and when I arrived in Arusha, Tanzania in May of 2001 and managed it for the next 27 months through its conclusion in August of 2003. The investigation had not been as complete as we would have liked 
bringing forth the evidence to show the incitement and the words broadcast on RTLM or published in Kangura in a complex proverb-filled African language was challenging to show the responsibility of the defendants for that broadcast, for those broadcasts, and their contents at the relevant periods was an enormous struggle. And the trial was 500 miles from the scene of the crime. And I always ask myself, what, what did this mean to the survivors of those who met death, sometimes in groups of tens of thousands, sheltered in churches and schools and the false hope of sanctuary, targeted because they were the Nyenzi, or the cockroaches described in those broadcasts. On December 3rd, 2003, our judges announced their decision. And afterwards, I spoke to Rwandans whom, with whom I'd worked on the trial, concerned that we had not won on every count and the decisions of the tribunal could, after all, under our statute, offer them no material reparation. I remember one man who was in the, in the courtroom that day, in the gallery, said, you know, today I saw, I saw men required to stand and hear judgment. They were men who I could not have before looked in the eye. Indeed, they were so far and away above myself and my family, we wouldn't have had the chance. But the day they were convicted, and sentenced before all the world for inciting the killing of my mother and sisters, for inciting the killing of hundreds of thousands of my people, for inciting genocide, the crime of crimes. This is the greatest day of my life. Since that experience and working in those courts, continuing as, as U.S. ambassador, I've traveled, as, as George said, that when I was ambassador for six years on more than 1,200 days and, and more than 1.6 million miles to, to every atrocity crime scene in the world and, and, and those of crimes committed in the last century. And everywhere I've met people who are the victims and survivors of those crimes, whose expectations for justice have been raised by the success of bringing to justice the authors of the media, the Prime Minister of Rwanda, the President of Serbia, the President of Sierra Leone, and, and other courts. Just this last week, I was in, in Kurdistan, in the Kurdish region, meeting with Yazidi and Christian survivors of the crimes of Daesh, including women who'd been raped months after months by, by, by scores of men. And in every case, they said, we need justice. We want these individuals held to account. Can you do that for us? We know today that this global justice project is challenged as, as ever before. And we know the places uh, where our colleagues in the ICC have not been able to succeed. And we have horrible crimes committed in northern Iraq against those women that I met, and in Syria, against those thousands of detainees, those people living under barrel bombs, those doctors and pediatricians that are helping people, indeed, uh, almost a targeted crime against, uh, against innocence. And we see no international tribunal yet in sight because of the blockage of the Security Council. But that does not mean there will not be justice. The victims are demanding it. And because of allies in CJA and elsewhere, the pathways are being found. Today, when I met with the CJA board, we discussed many of the ways to that justice and systems different than the Anglo-American model in which I worked in the United States and, and to some extent was the model for the international tribunals. Systems that allow victims to initiate and participate actively in their cases. We've seen how vital that's been in, in bringing former President Hissen Habre 
of Chan, the trial in the extraordinary chambers in Cambodia, excuse me, extraordinary chambers in uh, African chambers in Senegal, a case upon which we'll hear judgment on the 30th of May of, of, of this year. How essential that role of victims has been to the success of case two against the senior surviving Khmer, leader, Khmer Rouge leaders in Cambodia. Now, out of Syria and Iraq, solid evidence is being gathered by non-governmental organizations in partnership with civil society and the impacted areas. More than a million pages of written documentation from the regime alone. Hundreds of thousands of videos captured before they could be cleared from the web. Thousands of witness statements. And with CJA's expert assistance and experience, and the cooperation of relevant authorities in third countries. But first and foremost, with the leadership of victims and survivors, the path of justice is being opened. Dixon mentioned the case that will soon be filed. There will be others, including criminal prosecutions. And we'll hear about that in the coming days. I thank CJA for this honor. But I thank them in particular for their great confidence and their deep dedication. And I thank you all for recognizing it by being here tonight. Together we'll find ways to bring those responsible for mass atrocities to account and to achieve the justice for their victims and the protection for the people of this world from the greatest crimes known to humankind. Thank you very much.